So hi class, now uh, we are going into second part of chapter two, which deals with cell division. And what we will study in this um, part, second part is um, what's, uh, why do cell divide? And how they divide in bacteria, how they divide in humans, and, uh, and uh, what is essential before cell division that the DNA must replicate. So, uh, but we're not going into the details, um, but this chapter is very, very important. And uh, so please pay attention. So let me give you some basic uh, concept before I, I go into uh, this chapter. So the question is, um, why do cells uh, divide? Now, um, what I want you to uh, think that, as you know, there are two kinds of cells, like right? um, bacterial cells, prokaryote, and, uh, and human cells, or human cells represents uh, eukaryotes. So if you, if you look, bacterial cells, they, uh, they divide by asexual means, and by asexual, asexually, and the process is binary fission. What happens in this binary fission is that one bacterial cell, one bacterial cell um, divides into two half, um, and then two half then grow into two dependent uh, bacteria. Bacteria. So uh, the progression of, of bacterial division is if this is a uh, this is the y-axis, and this is the x uh, x-axis. X-axis, y and uh, x-axis. Then, if if this is the number of cells and this is time, then bacteria divides. with time and straight line. It, it's arithmetic in beginning and then it becomes logarithmic. And one of the essential features when that bacteria is, is dividing is present of, of, of nutrition. For example, if a bacteria that infects or contaminates some milk, it will grow, keep growing until the, the, the milk, the nutrition is there in the so nutrition is the limiting factor. In human cells, it is quite interesting if you note if you, if you uh, notice that in human cells, our journey starts as a single cell uh, zygote, which, which is formed by the fertilization of male and female gamete inside mother's body, and then uh, in nine months, there's a development of of infant. So um, as compared to as compared to bacterial cells, human cells, what happens? Cells divide and then differentiate. What do I mean by differentiate? That is that is that uh, this zygote. Will, will form cells which will develop into uh, brain cells, which is which is the role is to memory and and sense uh, sense pain or pain or other signals. Uh, kidney cells it is involved in 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 secretion or removal of waste. And then uh, liver cells, uh, intestinal cells. They are involved in digestion and metabolic process. So what happened, it starts, what I'm trying to communicate to you that human journey starts as a single cell and then there is cell division. And together with cell division, as compared to bacteria, which is logarithmic, there is differentiation into very specialized organs like brain, heart, intestine, 
uh, kidney, lungs, liver, uh, and many other skin. So I would like to uh, to like you to uh, like you to uh, uh, compare skin cells with with, the, with brain cells. So skin cells um, skin cells keeps keeps uh, dividing because we we old skin cells are removed and it is replaced by new cells. But brain cells uh, divide very slowly. Brain cells they divide very slowly because if they divide, uh, that's the reason because if somebody has stroke, um, those cells are permanently damaged and difficult to bring them into, into full-fledged action uh, if it is a, it's a, it's a strong uh, stroke. Similarly, heart attack, you know, uh, but heart cells, they don't divide. They have limited capacity to divide. So brain cells, heart cells, liver cells. So if somebody has cirrhosis, it's very hard to, to regenerate uh, liver cells because they divide very slowly. So on the other hand, skin cells, hair follicles, yeah, we grow a couple of inches of uh, hair every weeks or month. Uh, so some cells keep dividing, some cells, we, when we eat and our food is passing through our intestine, lower, uh, small intestine, large intestine, it sheds a lot of uh, skin uh, epithelial cells and then they are replaced. So those epithelial cells, hair follicles, skin cells, they continuously divide. Whereas brain cells, heart cells, liver cells, uh, they divide very slowly. And they, as we age, it keeps uh, the capacity to divide becomes uh, lesser and lesser. So, so um, what did, so cells, so growth means cell division essentially. But in, in bacteria, it is a number game. In, 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 in human cells, given the complexity of our body, cells differentiate into specialized organs, okay? So, but cell division is essence of life, okay? So let's uh, go to the uh, first slide for this part second. So look at this slide, right? Uh, pay attention, it's, it's very interesting that first there is a hierarchy in our body, cells, cells, identical cells, they form tissues, identical tissues forms organs, and then organ, they, they become a part of the system, and then many systems come together to form body. Let's take an example, for example, neuronal cells, they come together to form a, a, a nerve tissue, which is could be part of brain, uh, brain is a very specialized organ, and then brain communicates with spinal cord, and then it goes into various kinds of nervous system like voluntary or autonomic nervous system, and it helps as it, it communicates with nervous system, it communicates with uh, circulatory system, digestive system, uh, respiratory system, and support the functioning of our body. Now pay attention to this interesting detail also. In, in our body, almost 300 billion cells divide every day. We don't know, like, you know, we don't know. We have many micro injuries uh, or, or, you know, cells are old cells are going off, new cells are coming up to the extent that almost three, 200 million cells per minute. So from here, you can calculate how many cells, new cells are formed per second. And, uh, you know, uh, so it's, it's our body has unique capacity to, to multiply cells. Again, not all cells multiply at this, at this speed or this space. Brain cells, they, as we age, it's, it's, it slows down. Heart, liver, everything. But skin cells, they, they divide for a longer time. So uh, coming back, how does uh, cells... Uh, how does uh, cells divide? So, so cell, uh, cell doesn't divide haphazardly. talking about human cells. There is, a, there is a pathway by which cell divide. And that pathway is, is generally cyclical, cyclical. And this is called as cell cycle. And this cell cycle is, uh, it doesn't, again, cycle doesn't happen uh, hypothetically, it happens in phases. So let's say 
uh, one of the phases, one of the phases could be, uh, one of the phases could be, uh, could be uh, G1 phase, which is called, called as growth phase. Uh, the second phase could be, uh, second phase could be, uh, S phase, that is called as synthesis phase, and here DNA duplicates because if a cell doesn't duplicate its DNA, the other cell without DNA or chromosome cannot survive because DNA has all the executive information. So before cell division, where cell division means when a single cell divides into two, the DNA has to duplicate. Technically, DNA duplication is, is, is called as replication of DNA. And this is an enzymatic process. This is carried out by the enzyme. If you're a biology major, then, then you will more, read more detail about the process of replication in molecular biology class or genetics class or in both. So, so uh, and then after S phase, uh, there is a phase uh, called as a G2 phase. And that is growth phase growth phase two. In the growth phase two, cells are preparing for, for division. G2 phase, it's called as growth phase two. Phase two, this is growth phase two. Uh, then the remaining is, is, is called as the M phase. M phase means mitotic phase. M phase for that mitotic phase. And mitotic phase in, in mitotic phase is the phase where what happens that that uh, that the chromosome which has duplicated in the S phase chromosomal division occurs in, in, the, in the mitotic phase. And this mitotic phase uh, could lead to formation of finally two daughter cells. So um, it is very essential that when a daughter cells, are, two daughter cells are formed, they get equal nucleus, equal chromosomes, and mitochondria, ribosomes, everything equal. So uh, let's say if, if this is a cell and this is the nucleus, then uh, mitosis uh, is mainly responsible for, for uh, this, the division of, of chromosome and nucleus. So the division of nucleus is called as, as karyokinesis. Kinesis, kinesis, and then after this, the cytoplasm divides. First, nucleus divides, and then cytoplasm divides. The division of cytoplasm is called as cyto, cytokinesis. Cytokinesis. So, the division of nucleus is called as as karyokinesis, and the division of of cytoplasm is called as 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 uh, cytokinesis, karyokinesis, cytokinesis. Now um, I want to go back to the slide and show you that how does uh, DNA replication takes place. So DNA replication takes place when a parent DNA. So what you you're seeing here is a parent DNA um, that is parent DNA that is, parent DNA that is, uh, that has to divide, uh, but before division, it has to, it has to 
the DNA has to duplicate because the daughter cells have to receive equal number of chromosome or DNA. So what happens here is that, let's say if this is a parent DNA, DNA is double helix, so I will show for simplicity, a straight um, line. And these uh, are connected by hydrogen bond, where A, A is bonded to T, and G is bonded to C, and A to T, or T to A. So this is connected. This is the parent DNA. Now, when the, the cell has to divide, the enzyme that will play a major role is called as DNA. DNA polymerase. And for the division, will what happen that these parent DNA will separate, will separate out, and then then a new daughter uh, DNA will be synthesized. New daughter DNA will be synthesized. And this is carried out by the enzyme uh, DNA, DNA polymerase. So, um, so this, I, I don't want to go into uh, too much detail because you will learn in this, uh, in more uh, molecular biology or genetic, um, genetics class course. So I leave this here. And now, so again, before cells divide, the DNA has to duplicate. And that process of duplication is called as DNA replication. And this is carried out by an enzyme called as DNA polymerase. And what is enzyme? I talked to you in part one, that an enzyme is a process that enhances the rate of reaction. Now, uh, let's go into mitosis and meiosis. But first, I would again, before getting into the details of mitosis and meiosis, I'll give you a basic background. So in our, in human body, in the human body, there are two kinds of cells. In the human body, there are two kinds of cells. One is, one, one, one type of cells, one of the type of cells, one of our category of cells are called as somatic cells, which, are, are maximum in numbers and they're responsible for developing organs and tissues. Tissues and they are in majority. Second kinds of second kind of cells are called as germ cells. Germ cells, they are mainly responsible for the generation of gametes. Uh, gametes. So in, in, in males, in males, um, it, will, it will form sperm. And this is, uh, uh, will be formed in testes. And in females, form egg. And they are form in ovaries. So there are what, I'm, what I was trying to say that there are two kinds of, of cells, somatic cells, which mainly are in majority. Uh, they form organs, and uh, but a, major, a minority of cells, which is present in reproductive organs, testes in males and ovaries in female, they have cells that can give rise to uh, gametes uh, and, uh, and uh, um, sperms and eggs, male and female. Um, so, what happens that uh, during during uh, fertilization, uh, sperm and eggs they meet and they lead to the formation of zygote. Right? So one is one is germ cells responsible for the formation of of the gametes. Now, 
somatic cells, which forms organs, they mainly undergo mitosis, because you use mitosis. Mitosis. And mitosis is where the chromosome, uh, chromosome number remain, remain, chromosome number remains same. From, from parent cells to daughter cells, the number of chromosome remains same, same. But in meiosis, which is responsible for the generation of, of uh, egg and sperm, in meiosis, in meiosis, in meiosis, uh, the chromosome number, the chromosome number is reduced. Now reduced to, reduced to what? It is reduced to, reduced to high. Why half? Because I mentioned to you in the beginning of the class that our um, body, our each cell in our body, in a somatic cell, they have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Don't get confused here. They're not, all the 46 chromosomes are not different, but they're present as pairs. So when, uh, when the sperm and eggs are fertilizing, when the sperm and eggs, eggs are fertilizing, then, then if the numbers are not reduced, from 46 to 23, then our species will be lost because the number of the chromosomes will be doubled and that's not a good sign. So in meiosis, the sperm has 23 uh, chromosome, the eggs have 23 chromosome, and when the uh, fertilization occurs, the total leads to 46 or 23 pair of chromosome. So 23 comes from father and 23 comes from mother. But before this happened, meiosis have to happen. If meiosis is not right, then there could be a developmental problem. Okay, so uh, both divisions are important. Mitosis is important for supporting our body because if you are shedding skin cells, if you're shedding hair follicles, if you're shedding intestinal lining, then it's important to replenish those lost, lost cells through mitosis. And then as we become adult, for um, we, we, uh, and uh, so there's development of sperm and eggs in males and females. And then after reproduction, there's fertilization and, and it's the beginning of a new generation. And here, then species, uh, from one generation to the next generation, the chromosome number is maintained. So if meiosis goes wrong, the number of chromosomes from one generation to the next generation is changed, then it will be a problem. So uh, meiosis is very generational inheritance and mitosis is mainly for maintenance. If a DNA is mutated, mitosis goes wrong, it will, be, it will lead to the formation of tumor and, and uh, uh, cancer. In, in, in meiosis, if there is a problem with sperm or eggs, then it can lead to the, with, the form, uh, with the formation of uh, developmental diseases. Right? It could be syndrome, Down syndrome, it could be uh, many other uh, possibilities. So both are very important for the survival of human beings. Okay, so now we go, we go into the deep uh, of mitosis. So um, mitosis doesn't occur uh, randomly. It occurs in phases. So I have a better slide um, for mitosis. Um, so, um, Mitosis is, is, is occurs in phases. Uh, 
if mitosis is not occurring and the cells are present in interphase, then it moves, once there's an urge for the cells to divide, then from interphase, the interprophase, and then prometaphase, and from prometaphase to metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So let's go over again. If the cells are not dividing or are preparing for division, they are present in interphase. The moment there's a triggering signal for the cells to divide, the cells move from interphase to prophase, prophase to prometaphase, prometaphase to metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Now, uh, the way I, I teach is a little bit different. I teach very objectively because students sometimes they get uh, lost between the phases, they get confused. So I want you to focus on a couple of things when you are uh, uh, studying from interphase to telophase. So I want you to focus on a couple of things. What are the things that I would like you to focus are following. So again, I repeat that uh, moving from interphase to, to, uh, to telophase and cytokinesis, you have to focus on, so first is interphase, interphase, then telophase, then Metaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and after that, cytokinesis. Cytokinesis. Cytokinesis, as I mentioned to you before, it is the division of cytoplasm. So what are these? So uh, from enough from interphase uh, to to telophase, they are mainly involved in in the they are mainly involved in the division division of nucleus, and that is called as karyokinesis. Cytokinesis is division of cytoplasm. First, karyokinesis occurs then. Cytokinesis occurs. And what are the phases? The phases there, yeah, phases are, are prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Now to avoid confusion, uh, I teach very systematically, very objectively, and I want you to focus on a couple of things. One is chromosomal structure. to focus on chromosomal structure. Then I would like you to focus on chromosomal movement. Then I would like you to focus on, on formation of spindle fibers. Okay. Then I would like you to focus on movement of Centrioles. Then I would like you to focus on presence or absence, absence of nucleolus and, and nuclei or nucleus. So these are the criteria that I would like you to focus on each phase. Each phase, you have to focus on these million features. If you focus on this, you will never get confused, uh, whether in genetics class or in molecular biology class, and things will be very clear. Uh, so nucleus. So <clears throat> let's go back to the so let's look at interphase. What is the structure of chromosomes? So the chromosomes in this, in this, in this phase, the chromosome, they look very, 
very thin. The chromosomes, they look very thin. If you focus, they look like the very thin, like a ball of wool. And what you see here, what you see here within the nucleus, this uh, within the nucleus is a, another organelle called as nucleolus. Nucleolus. So in interface cells, chromosome is thin. And what you see as white boundary, this is called as a nuclear envelope. And if you focus, zoom in, you'll see nuclear core. So all these are present. There is proper cell, there is proper nucleus. The nucleus has nucleolus and chromosomes are very thin. And please focus on this especially. These centrioles, they are present in pair, and they are localized in one of the cells. So this is interface, and interface cells may not divide, but if there is any situation where cells need to divide, then cells also prepare for, for division because cells have to duplicate many things. Uh, they need all the resources. Division is very, very, very uh, critical for cells, very crucial. So all the prep goes in the interface. Now, now let's transit into, let's transit from interface to, to, to prophase. What you see here, first the chromosomes that were thin, now they become very thick and shortened. The nucleus, the nucleolus, which was present in interface, disappears in the prophase. There is no nucleolus. So chromosome becomes thicker, shortened, and focus on these two cent uh, centrioles. They are moving towards opposite end. So centrioles, if I can draw an analogy, they are moving towards opposite pole, so north pole and south pole. And also, if you see, there are fibers being formed. These are called as uh, spindle fibers. They are very much proteinaceous in nature, and you'll see what it does. So, so centrioles, which was localized here in interface, moves into south pole and north pole. In prophase, starts, begins to move, and there's a formation of, just like sun rays, there's formation of spindle fibers. Now, from prophase, the cells enter into prometaphase. Now, what happens here? The nucleus has almost, you know, uh, has almost begun to disappear. Nucleus begins to disappear. The nucleus, which was present in prophase and present in interphase, they begins to disappear in prometaphase. So if you get a question, in which phase the nucleus disappear, it is prometaphase. And what you see here again, the spindle fibers, now they occupy north pole and south pole. And the spindle fiber, they go and connect to the, so focus here, the spindle fibers goes and connect to the each chromosome. So let me show you how it connects. So um, let's say, Let's say this is a uh, drawing. Uh, let's say this is a this is a, a a piece to which the chromosomes are attached. So So this is chromosome. Uh, this, this information is very important. Chromosomes are attached and so this is just uh, for you to understand this is not a perfect diagram. So, but I want you to understand. So this, the, the central piece is called as, called as 
centromere, centromere, and and these what you see like like ears of bunny or rabbit. These are called as called as uh, these are called as chromatids. Now, so let's say this is uh, this is a this is chromatid a. Um, this is uh, extension of A on the other side of central ear. This is A plus A, A, A prime, A dash. So now, what is the relationship between uh, A and A prime? A and A prime is they are called as, as they are called as sister chromatid. Sister, they will have identical DNA. They are sister. The relationship between A, A and A plus, A, A and A prime is they are called as sister chromatid. So central mirror. So spindle fibers, spindle fiber, they, they emerge from centriole and they attach to central mirror. This is the place where the spindle fibers attach. And what is the, how it at attaches? It attaches through a structure called as, attaches a structure through, uh, through a structure which is called as chi. So, kind of to core. Now, in which in what context we are talking here? We are talking in the in the phase uh, pro metaphase. In pro metaphase. In pro metaphase, the nucleus has almost disappeared, and centrioles they occupy north pole and south pole. Spindle fibers go and attach to the central near through a structure called as kinetochore, right? So let's go back to that slide. So you see here, um, the spindle fibers, they go and attach to a, to a knob-like structure called as kinetochore, which you see here. So this is, so chromosome that were floating in the nucleus, they get attached to spindle fiber. Okay, so let's see what happens in the next stage. So from prometaphase, the chromosomes, the cells, they enter into metaphase. And what is what happens in metaphase? In metaphase, the chromosomes they align themselves on a plate. The chromosomes they align themselves in a in a plate, and this plate is called as metaphasic plate you see here so if you compare to the to, to pro metaphase the chromosomes are disorganized they're attached but they're disorganized half is it but when you go to metaphase the chromosomes are arranged in one line and this is called as metaphasic plate it is very critical because after this the chromosomes will divide the chromosomes will divide and and when they divide when they divide or they, they break, they move towards opposite poles. So in anaphase, chromosomes split, the, the chromosomes split and they move towards opposite pole. And they move because this, these chromosomes are very difficult to break, but this breakage happens because of the power of, of spindle fibers and they move towards opposite pole. And if the, if the chromosomal division is successful, the cells are, the nucleus 
our the nucleus is ready to divide into two daughter nucleus in the telophase. So what you see here, whatever we lost going from interphase to prophase is lost uh, that comes back in telophase. So the doctor, daughter nuclei, so one nucleus now give rise to two daughter nuclei, which has, in which there is formation of nucleus. Remember, we lost the nucleus in the prophase there's formation of nuclei and nuclear envelope. There is no spindle fibers, right? There is no spindle fibers. Okay, so, so, so these, after this nucleus has divided, cells will undergo cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the division of cytoplasm. So this is in nutshell about mitosis. So as I mentioned to you, uh, mitosis is, is mitosis. In mitosis, what, have, what are the salient features of mitosis? The salient feature of mitosis is that, is that in mitosis, so first of all, mitosis, first of all, what happens in mitosis is that it occurs in Somatic cells, somatic cells. Second, chromosomal number is main, maintained. Maintained. Right? What do what do I mean by the chromosomal number is maintained? Means if if the the parent parent cell has forty six or twenty three pairs of chromosome then the daughter cells, skin cells, will have same 46 or 23 pair of chromosomes. There is no change, right? right? And so these are the mates. So, and what is, uh, what is, what is um, mitosis needed for? This is needed for growth, repair, repair, mitosis. So journey from zygote to an infant in nine months inside mother's body, it's because of mitosis mainly. Right? Now, now if we if we compare mitosis with meiosis, meiosis, so meiosis occurs in germ cells, and where are germ cells present? They're present in reproductive organs. Um, uh, testes and versus uh, ovaries uh, in male and female, right? And and what happens to the chromosome number in meiosis? The chromosome number, chromosome number is reduced, reduced. And what 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 do I mean by that? Is that from forty six or forty six or 23 pairs, the chromosomes are reduced to only 23. So mother's egg and father's sperm will contain 23 chromosomes each. And when they fuse uh, uh, during fertilization, they go back to 46. So chromosome number is reduced. And mitosis is mainly needed for, for maintaining the chromosome number from one gen generation to the next one generation to the next now mitosis is 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 not very simple as uh, sorry meiosis is not very simple as mitosis meiosis uh, uh, takes uh, time and it occurs in two phases so uh, let's go a little bit uh, into meiosis Meiosis, uh, meiosis, which is responsible for reduction of division, it occurs in two phases. First phase is called as meiosis one, and the second phase is called as meiosis two. 
it is it is uh, it is the meiosis one it is the meiosis one that is the uh, reduction you know, uh, division in 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 meiosis two is just like mitosis so in the chromosome numbers are are maintained maintained in meiosis two so how does this occur so again this also occurs in phases so let's uh, learn about the in in brief about the phases of meiosis one and two so meiosis Phase is called as prophase one, prometaphase one, metaphase, metaphase um, one, anaphase one, and then telophase one, and cytokinesis. Cytokinesis one. So what happens in, in, in the reproductive organ, one cell, one of the cells will enter into meiosis one, and then during the process, this will generate uh, two cells. This will generate two cells, and these uh, two cells which are formed out, uh, out of meiosis one, will have half the chromosome. So if the if the parent cell had the parent cell had uh, let's say forty six chromosome parent cell, um, sorry, the parent cell had uh, forty six chromosome, then the daughter cells will have will have. Um, 23. So 23 and two. reduction division it takes place in in, in meiosis one. Okay. So one cell gives rise to two cells. Now the question you can think that how does meiosis two occurs? So these two cells that are formed in meiosis one, they enter into meiosis two. So what is what is meiosis two? Composed of meiosis two is composed of a one a prophase yes, meiosis two. This is meiosis two, prophase two. Uh, second phase is prometaphase two. Third phase is metaphase two. Fourth phase is anaphase two. Fifth phase is telophase two, and then cytokinesis two. So in the end, these two cells, these two cells from meiosis one, will give rise to give rise to four cells. Will give rise to four cells. Four identical cells. Uh, Four identical cells. So now, one more difference to add: in mitosis, we get the formation of two cells, but in meiosis, we get the formation of four cells, right? Which is less than. So mitosis gives rise to two cells. Meiosis, because of meiosis one and meiosis two, it gives rise to four cells. So just to recapitulate. Uh, there are two kinds of cells in human bodies. One is called as somatic cells. The second is called as germ cells. Somatic cells multiply by mitosis, which has prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and cytokinesis. Give rise to two cells with equal number of chromosomes. In meiosis, it occurs in reproductive organs. 
and that give rise to gametes, the chromosome numbers are reduced by half and uh, meiosis one and meiosis two, two phase is biphasic pro phase one, pro metaphase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, cytokinesis one, and then meiosis two. So because of that, four cells are formed. And another very interesting thing happens in meiosis, and this interesting thing uh, occurs in, in the in pro phase. This interesting thing occurs in pro phase one. What is that interesting phase? Uh, just a little bit of detail that in prophase one what happens in prophase one what happens that so let's say in a family if there are two or three kids right so what happens that they don't resemble to each other although the parents are same the parent chromosome number are same but the kids they differ because of because of a process called as crossing over which occurs in prophase one, and that is responsible for the exchange of change of uh, parts, and that give rise to variation in the. So, so remember, don't get confused. Meiosis is responsible for number one maintaining the chromosome number from one generation to the next. And second, it also generates variations. And that variation is, is important because if we all are same, then, then, then there is no identity, but we all are different. So and that difference comes from variation. This variation occurs in meiosis in prophase one through a process that is called as crossing over. And the genes are exchanged. So let me go back uh, to the slides. So, so, um, so we covered mitosis. So look at this, and then we covered meiosis one and meiosis two. And what is important that there are some interesting videos that. Um, that you must watch on mitosis and meiosis. So I will uh, post those videos uh, on the blackboard and that we make things more simpler and more interesting. So with this, I finish with the second part of chapter two uh, and we end our uh, chapter two here. Okay. Thank you.